Hello, Council Bluffs Area Chamber of Commerce members. This is Drew Camp, President and CEO of the Council Bluffs Area Chamber of Commerce, here with our May 20th weekly legislative update. And excitingly, we actually have news to report on something happening at the state capitol uh, for the state legislature after a few weeks of lull and waiting for school vouchers, ESAs to kind of get resolved prior to moving appropriations and the adjournment process forward for the 2022 legislative session. This week on Wednesday, the Senate passed 10 of the 11 appropriation bills uh, that the House had earlier passed. There's 11 appropriations bills. Standings is always the last one. It's the Christmas tree bill, they call it, where you can kind of hang different pieces on it. That's the last one that always gets kind of concluded. In addition to education and HHS, they're working through some details there. Those are the two biggest individual budgets. So it makes sense that those two are having to get worked through as well before hopeful adjournment late next week. There's a, usually at least a couple days, even if anything is passed, just to go through the process of everything before they can close the books on the legislative session. So we're hoping that this time next week, we'll officially be able to say they've adjourned the 2022 election. That will be welcome news uh, for folks who are in a primary um, coming up on June 7th, uh, especially those in the House, uh, but obviously the House and Senate both um, deal with those, but there's more in the House being that they have 100 members versus 50. So that's something uh, we are definitely monitoring closely because that puts them in a very much of a time crunch, which was largely done intentionally to put some heat on them for the ESAs and the educational voucher pieces. So excitingly, we hope to have an adjournment by the end of next week. They will work through some different little tiny pieces of policy. We hope to get some of the pieces we've worked on that have not gotten over the hump like port authorities and get them worked into something within the appropriations process. That remains to be seen, but we will continue to do that leading into the closing and adjournment of the session next week. With regards to caucus, um, as you've all known, the Republicans have committed to having the Iowa caucuses remain the first in the nation in 2024, but the DNC, the Democrats, have not uh, made the same commitment. They are opening it up for applications. Iowa has not been guaranteed to be first in the nation, nor has New Hampshire or South Carolina, Nevada. Any of those early voting states are not guaranteed anything at this time. Going back to the fact they say we lack diversity of the electorate um, in the current environment, so they say that it needs to be reopened. That said, they reopened the process. They had 18 applications within a week um, to be the first in the nation. Um, it's very messy. The organization is largely not there, um, so that's something that it's become like I said, very much a mess. Um, so they are working through that, but there are going to be public input sessions. We have folks from the Iowa Chamber Alliance and other stakeholders throughout the state who are going to be at those and voicing our concerns and why we should remain first in the nation. And we look forward to continuing to bring updates on that going forward. But it is important to note that um, it may not be going the way they hoped it ha uh, would um, just to start. I also wanted to just mention uh, also, obviously, coming up here in two weeks from Tuesday is the June 7th primary election. Really important, um, being that it's for state, county, and federal positions. We have some important elections and important candidates and positions on the ballot coming up on June 7th. Um, specifically, there's some highly contended races for county supervisor, eight running for three, three people running for one for recorder, and then uh, Lee Voss and Matt Wilbur are running uncontested. And then we also have some of our state candidates, such as Brent Segrist, Charlie McConkie's seat, uh, being vacated by his retirement. Those are um, contended races here in our district. So it's really important to make sure that you're educating yourself prior to those June 7th um, primary elections, but then also getting out to vote. If that's absentee, that opened up on Wednesday. This last Wednesday is on the 18th. It closes, you have to have your request into the auditor's office by Monday. There's been a lot of changes in the last few years. It's really important to note that you do have a very short window to get your application in for absentee voting started Wednesday, closes Monday. Make sure that you uh, address that and handle it accordingly if need be. You can also go vote in person in the auditor's office or vote day of, obviously, at your respective polling places. You can register day of. Just make sure you bring proof of ID and two forms of identification to back up that that is, in fact, your residence. So that's something that is very, very important at the chamber. We take not only informing people about candidates, but informing them of the elections very seriously. So along the lines of informing them about the candidates, we are next week going to be releasing several candidate interviews uh, for folks who are running in contested races. We look forward to making those available to folks next week in our weekly legislative update. It will not be all of the candidates. All of them have been reached out to. It will be the ones whose interviews we have at that time. Those who may come after the fact, we will upload those as we get them and make them available prior to the June 7th election, because we think it's very important for folks to have that information. 
with that, I will close out our weekly legislative update by saying, hopefully we'll see an adjournment at the state legislature next, uh, next week. Obviously, if you need to, adjourn, to register or put in your request for an absentee ballot, do it by Monday. And also next week, watch for our candidate interviews to make sure you're informed going into the June 7th primary election. As always, I'll end by just saying thank you very much for your ongoing support and participation in not only the Chamber's public policy program, but also the Chamber's programming and events in, in general. It's something that we're very proud to provide you, and we appreciate your participation and support. Have a nice rest of the day.